Legacy Motor Club announces they will switch to Toyota starting in the 2024 season. Team owner Jimmy Johnson tweeted, I'll always be appreciative of Chevy and what we accomplished together. Starting in 24, I'm excited for Legacy Motor Club to partner with Toyota Racing and forge a new legacy for the future. Brett, spot on, spot on. Oh, I didn't want to go first. Um, <laughs> man, I, so last week we talked about being a key partner and we talked about which teams are key partners for Chevrolet. We rattled those three teams off. Legacy Motor Club is not one of them. And Jimmy Johnson is a seven time champion with what manufacturer? Chevy. Chevrolet. Chevrolet. Um, I am so spot off for Chevrolet allowing Jimmy Johnson to leave the conversation, to leave the table. Uh, I mean, clearly Jimmy has a has a three to five year plan here with this team, and clearly he's making a lot of the decisions. He's bringing in a lot of his people to the table, and Jimmy Johnson is arguably the most competitive guy we know because you can't win seven championships at the Cup Series level with all the different cars and all the different formats in all the different time of time span without being truly competitive and truly amazing. I know good and well in Jimmy's heart, and I have not talked to Jimmy other than he tweeted me and corrected me that it's not Legacy Motorsports, it's Legacy Motor Club, <laughs> and I'm an idiot. I'm sorry, <laughs> Mr. Goat. I did that, and I, I apologized on the Twitter. Uh, <laughs> but I know good and damn well in Jimmy Johnson's heart Did you block him? <clears throat> that he didn't want to leave Chevrolet. So for him to get up and leave as a manufacturer and switch from Chevrolet to Toyota – um, it tells us that Toyota is going to make him a key partner, that they're going to bring him to the table. And listen, I've been privy to information um, as a spotter where you find out on days like the Daytona 500 and days like Talladega that the key partners are not going to work with you. Well, if you're Jimmy Johnson, who has seven championships with Chevrolet, and they got the balls to look at you and say, hey, Jimmy, we're not going to help Noah or Eric win this race, just so you know. Now, I don't know if that actual conversation happened, but I know that they do happen. If you want to be priority, you got to be a key partner. And if he switches to Toyota, clearly he feels like he's going to be a key partner. Real quick on the Toyota side, win-win for them. They get a seven-time Cup Series champion that came from another manufacturer, which makes it look like you're very attractive for some reason. <clears throat> Toyota – uh, initially got into the sport for one major reason. They had other reasons, but the major reason was to Americanize their brand. Well, they've done that over the years. And you go get an American icon like Jimmy Johnson, you're doing it even further. So yeah. spot on for Legacy Motor Club and Glad spot off that, right? for Chevrolet. Yeah, I mean, you talk about all the success Jimmy's had in Cup and Chevy. He was When he was back running truck you know them stadium trucks wherever it was they were team chevy trucks you know that that's how long that relationship has been so to your point yeah 100 percent spot off for them letting him go uh and i have been in those meetings also where they like they'll tell you like we used to practice at daytona and talladega they would say okay guys we're gonna go out in the line the chevy cars are gonna be 10 12 deep it's gonna be all the hendrick cars all the rcr cars track house wasn't around then i was at R rpm which essentially is legacy motor club and they go all right you guys just line up at the back and figure it out however you want however you want like we don't like we literally don't care what you guys do and then you know that would be the same thing like if we could if we could push one of these hendrick cars or one of these rcr cars to the win or a stage win that's what we need to do like and you're like okay well f off you know like <laughs> all right great thanks a lot um but on the toyota side of it listen we've been fighting strength and numbers for years like, i mean they were even worse before we got well, there y'all race each other the whole race <laughs> <laughs> but just in the in plate racing alone like you don't have you can't you have to base your strategy off of the other two manufacturers because you don't have enough cars to just do whatever you want to do and they it was even worse before 2311 it was four now it's six now it's going to be eight um and maybe more if either one of them teams add some um, so now you're, you're evening the numbers to where you can just run your own race and not have to worry so much about what them other guys are doing. So it, it's a tremendous get on our side. And like you said, yeah, Eric Jones has a standing outstanding relationship with Toyota. I've seen a lot of, um, I think Jack Irving and some other guys from Toyota were tweeting how, how happy they are to have Eric back in the fold with Toyota. So, I mean, it's just a win-win for Toyota and I, I don't have any idea how Chevy lets well, this happen. And on, on top of it, I think a lot of us have, seen this but toyota has a really strong development program and we've always talked about toyota doesn't have a place for some of these drivers that should be moving up to go well now this is the opportunity right i think they've i don't know who where the hierarchy will be with teams but 
at least we know that there are more spots opening up for Toyota development to move forward as well. TJ, what do you think? <clears throat> I don't think any of those spots are opening up. Um, I mean, if they add cars in the future. So, yeah, definitely a punch in the mouth uh, for Chevy. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, I'm st there's no way that Jimmy just did this and then like at least say, "Hey, this is I this is I offer over here." Like, th there's yeah, no way so Chevy, he just I mean, blindsided Chevy. And, and I don't know all the things that go on behind the table or behind closed doors, but these OEMs control so many aspects of the data that's distributed from a sim perspective, tire perspective. They control how many hours of wind tunnel time these teams get where that information is distributed. So imagine that, you know, me and Freddie are best friends and I tell him everything and me and TJ are good friends and I only tell him 25% of what I tell Freddie. That's what that's the difference between being a key partner to these OEMs versus not. And Toyota in the Cup Series, they don't not have a key partner. Everybody's a key partner. So you're now adding your third organization. Um, I, I mean, I would think that a lot of Chevrolet teams – and maybe even some Ford teams would have loved to have been that third key partner. I, I, I we, we saw key partnerships come into play this year with uh, Louvers. <laughs> you know, there, there's there's a key <clears throat> partners that got information that other teams didn't about how, you know what to do with these Louvers or how to do it and who received what. Like <laughs> you see it right there in the proofs in the pudding of why one team had eight, man, you know, Louvers that were you know mm -hmm. doctored, modified, and one team had one. So. I mean, you just, that's just the way it goes. I think this hurts down the road because when you do those running orders, you still need these guys. These guys are a pretty important piece to your, to your puzzle, whether you, like that's, um, you know, when you take all the Chevys and line them up, you kind of know the pecking order of which guys are, and these guys are still, you need them. Um, they're just important. Even if they're sixth in line, they're important. Because that keeps that. If you take, if you have a six car train with these two, you know, cars in the back of it, and you take them away, now you're only four cars. Yeah. But I really wish I would have reached out to Justin Marks, um, bleeding into the show because it just now hit me. But like when you look at what he accomplished when he bought Chip Ganassi Racing, Chevrolet could have told him to go away. They could have told him you're not going to be a key partner. So for him to staple his place and his legacy. Um, as track house and remain a key partner because without that partnership, Ross Chastain ain't making a final four last year. No, without that partnership, Ross Chastain probably ain't winning two races last year. Daniel Suarez won a race, obviously, Ross having a great season this year. If he can't maintain that, then he's in trouble. So, shout out to him for once again proving how, how well he's doing on the business side of the sport. And again, man, it just it hurts my heart a little bit. To see, because this would be like Dell Jr. announcing tomorrow that Junior Motorsports is switching to Ford. Like he's been a Chevy guy his whole life. Every car at his house is a Chevrolet. So to have to have this happen, just uh, it, it's like it's like watching uh, Brett Favre leave the Packers and go to the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. You're like, no, this this can't happen. You watch Aaron Rodgers leave, go to the Jets. You're like, no, no. You know, you watch R Rusty Wallace switch from. Uh, Ford to Dodge or whatever he did back in the day. Pontiac. He's and, and you're like, no, this can't happen. Like this is just one of those just, heartbreaking moments. I'm just amazed at how quickly it happened. Where Legacy Motor Club, obviously the transition happened in the off season. I mean, it's only May and this has already been solidified and announced. There must have been conversations even before the announcement. I think conversations started probably when Jimmy bought the team or is in the process of of accruing more and more equity in the team. And like I said, I think he's I think he's steering the ship. And listen, this was – and obviously there's a lot of turnover there front office-wise. Th this was where we were going with Bubba. Like this is th – the original plan was Danny was going to buy into twenty uh, to RPM and that, that was going to become a Toyota team. Now, I, this could be just, you know, coincidence that it happens to be that same team, but these, th these conversations could have started that long ago, you know, with that three, four years ago now, um, you know, because I think that was the original plan and that kind of fell apart and then we, they formed 2311. But, you know, that, that, that these conversations were happening around this team – three or four years ago.